It's a little bit more than just a home gym. Hey guys, it's Kate. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi. My name is Kate. I'm a bodybuilder. I'm married to a bodybuilder. And this is our gym. A uh, little bit of a backstory. We started our garage gym back in 2019. We wanted a space that we could have for just like our compound movements really. So squats, deadlifts, um, chest press, and then maybe some like adjustable dumbbell movements at home. I wasn't fully into competing then, so it wasn't like I needed everything. We still have gym membership. So we started with just a squat rack and it literally just came out over this door. And that was like our first big purchase. And then COVID hit. Now I am a nurse and so during COVID, I was really seen right in the trenches of COVID and I did not want to go to the gym at all. And then also like a lot of the gyms had COVID restrictions that were kind of like weird. Like you're in like a little box and you had to stay in your box and you had to wear a mask and it's already hard to breathe in the masks as it is working 12 hour shifts. And then I had to go to the gym and try to sweat with them. No, it just wasn't gonna happen. It also turned out to kind of work in our favor that during COVID all of those like tiny gyms that couldn't afford to stay open were shutting down and we were getting equipment and pieces for like ridiculously marked down prices. And so when my husband said, hey, can I like extend the garage gym out a bit more? Um, I said, yeah. And the only stipulation was my Kia Soul had to fit in the garage. And I want to say it fit in here until about the end of 2020, beginning of 2021. I was pregnant during the time and he was like, hey, I have a couple more pieces. You can like get rid of the gym membership entirely, be safe at home while you're pregnant with the newborn and then with the newborn. So I said, okay, just whatever you need. And it has now turned into what we have today. And it worked out completely in my favor. I built this entire physique and he's built his entire physique out of this garage. So when people say that you need a full gym to be a competitor, it's not true. I built a competitor body in a, gym, in a garage gym. So I just kind of wanted to show you around because when I tell people I have a garage gym, I don't think that this is really what they're picturing. a little bit more than just a home gym. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the first piece, which is our biggest piece. I think we've moved it once the entire time that we've had the home gym, maybe twice. Um, but this is our Rep Fitness squat rack. It's our rack, this is the first piece we bought and it has kind of just kind of grown bigger and bigger add-ons. Everything that we need in a home gym, we probably could just use the rack and be just fine. Um, I don't get into the specifics. I let my husband just kind of buy it, how it fits into our gym, how it's gonna work for our style of training, and I just kind of buy what we need, babe. So this is his rack. This is my rack. This is a Bells of Steel rack with a belt squat inside of it. This was, what was this? This was a, a birthday gift from my husband, so to say. It was some kind of gift. Um, it was like a Christmas kind of gift. It was a big purchase for something. Um, so we always say the his and her racks. His rack, her rack. Um, if you can't tell by the pink plates, we will get there. Anyways, back to the squat rack. So <laughs> this is our big rack. We did at one point have a cable machine, like the ones that sit in the corner, but I ended up selling it to my friend who is my lifting partner. She's also a coach at her own facility and she just didn't have one. And we really wanted to try this Aries system that fits into this rack. The Aries is rogue, rep, rep. Aries is rep. Proud of myself for knowing it's called an Aries. 
So it is a cable system that works in through the rack. So you have two like front swivel pieces here. On the back on the floor, we have three attachment pieces. So you have the two on the side, one down the middle, and then a double hook up top. And then the two stacks in the back with our custom stickers on it. We had, did you make this or you had this made? He had this made so that um, it like, it would attach on the sides but not down the center. So this piece will attach to the center and then you can just connect it up through the middle here. And so it'll pull the weight from the top through the pulley at the bottom straight down. And I use that for like seated rows because otherwise if you're sitting on the bench, it's kind of like a, a decline almost where you want it more like this for the rows. So I'll sit on the floor and use the foot pad to do the rows. The top one, it does have the dual pulley system, but a lot of times we'll just add on one of our bars to make it a single pull system so that you can do wide grip rows, any kind of pull downs, rows from up there. These front pulleys do go up and down. So you can bring them up for like rear delts or even higher for high pull downs. And then as low as it goes here for there, maybe for some type of row that way, because then we have our lever arms that get in the way. So these lever arms go up and down, but I, as strong as I am, I just don't have the body mechanics or the like, to get it up. So I always have to have my husband come and set them for me how I need them. But this way with the lever arms, we're able to do in our home gym a lot of like the hammer strength style machines, but plate loaded. So chest press, shoulder press. Um, you can also set it up with these cables up top coming down and holding it up for like a row. That one's a little bit more complicated. What else can you use the arms for? The arms, you can also do like line rows off the bench. Just swivel the bench around and do that. Rows, dips. Rows, press. dips, chest press. Kind of whatever you need to, and then you just plate load it. Speaking of our bench, this is our bench here. It is also rep fitness. It's the wide, wider back. So, that's, is this a standard? Well, it feels it, the standard bench that uh, feels wide to me. But it's probably just because I'm so little. So the bench like is literally like the size of my hips, like small puss. And so for me, sometimes doing rows is hard because it'll dig into my shoulders here. So I just have to be a little careful and like how positioning works, or maybe just do like a single arm and I like shift so that the bench is more on my chest than in my armpit. I am fortunate enough now that after having a son and losing a lot of weight that I'm part of the itty bitty titty committee. So I don't have to worry about being squished on the bench, but they are pretty, pretty soft. So it doesn't, doesn't hurt me that much. We'll do a lot of, um, squat movements inside the rack as well. I'll do like my big squats in this rack. Sometimes I'll do it off of the front of my, of my rack, but I always feel safer in here because we do have these like Titan J hooks that swing so I can get into position and they just like drop out. And then these are our safeties on this one. The safeties on the other one are the rogue safety bars. They're a little short, so sometimes I feel like I'm really close to this rack. And this rack is wider, so sometimes if I'm too close to the rack, the plates will actually hit this if I shift just a little bit, whereas in this one it won't. Coming back into this rack, we do store some of our bars up here. We only have one up here right now, and it's the Kabuki Strength Transformer Bar. I really enjoy using this bar, but um, like I said, body mechanics, I can't get it down. 
or if I do, it's really entertaining to watch. So I don't get it down that often, but I do like that when my back is really sore, or like my shoulders hurt and it's a leg day. And then we have some attachments off the front so that way we can do all of our pull-up movements, hooks so that you can attach a band to it, and then the hangers for hanging leg raises and ab movements. movements. Along the back of the rack is our first set of plates. So these are pie plates from Rogue Fitness. We used to have the calibrated plates from, from Rogue as well. But, um, and those were in kilograms. That was actually really nice when I was powerlifting because a lot of the federations only use kilo plates. And so I could practice with that. However, after we had my son and he's like running through the gym, they're really slick and they're really thin and really easily droppable. So with the pie plates, pie dish plates, it has a better grip on it. So you're, let me take it on and off. Pie dish? Deep dish, deep dish. I really want a pie. <laughs> I'm gonna call it pie plates. They're pie plates, they're deep dish plates. And then on it is all of our plates. We have custom stickers from Plate Snacks that has my husband's designs for Kia Kahaha Athletics. It's a company, it's LLC that he's had for many years now. And so those are what's on our plates as well as one Aries stack because he hasn't done the other one yet. And then, of course, you have like chains and every other attachment that I don't use, but he uses. So. Over in this corner is, it's kind of like hard to get to because the bike's here. So a lot of the things that are used mostly is just the cable attachments, but not so much the bars on the floor. So I'll start from the top and work our way down. So these are all of our attachments for the cable machines, as well as just like a bucket of stuff. And then also some medals that I have from my first show I ever did. So amongst all of these attachments, you have very simple attachments like wide grip bars, um, easy bars, straight bars. And then we have our mag grips and then the Walmart brand mag grips that I got on sale once, which I was very proud of. All of our rope pull downs, we have a plethora of different styles of just handles, depending on kind of like what we're aiming for. We have multiple, I don't even know what these are. These are the, you go around your ankles for like kickbacks and stuff, or your arms for flies. We have multiples of those. And if you notice there's gonna be a theme going on, all of my stuff is pink. I'm a girl. This is gonna be a girly gym as much as I can make it. Um, working our way down. This is what we started with for like half pounders. When we get to the dumbbells, I'll show you why we have like little little ones. But um, you have the rogue mini plates, they attach to dumbbells, make them like into a half pound. So like instead of a five pound, you have like a seven and a half. But you can only do like two of these together and it made it kind of awkward. So then we got another one, another brand, which I will show you when we get there. On the wall is our first set of bars. These are kind of like bars we don't use that often or they're pretty light because they're in, since they're back here, it's gonna be easy to get to them. So you got earthquake bar, your PVC bar. We have a, a beater Bella, a multi-grip bar that I don't know what brand that is. Uh, the Rep Fitness Open Trap Bar. I really, really like this bar. It just hasn't been in my programming for so many months that I haven't used it. So right now it is belt storage for all of our belts. We have multiple, multiple Pioneer Fitness belts. Um, if you can't tell which ones are mine, they're the sparkly ones. But uh, as I lost weight for prep, I had to keep sizing down, sizing down, sizing down. So this is the only one that fits me right now and it's not customized because I like needed it as I was losing weight, so I just got one of their in-stock belts that came in in like a week. I'm hoping maybe I can send it back in and get it customized a bit, because I like the color and I like everything else about it, it just doesn't have anything said on it, so. Which is sad. Like this one says, this was my first one. It says beauty on the outside, beast on the inside. And then my other one, I bought when we were like vacationing like our second honeymoon together, so it says wifey. 
On the floor down here, we have just kind of all of our stretching equipment, and then this is like my go bag, so it has everything in it that I would need if I needed to go to an actual gym, because sometimes there's days where my programming asks for something specific, like a specific machine that we just can't simulate in here. So oh, I still do have a membership to the gym. Do I like going to a public gym anymore? Absolutely not. So that's always packed up, but it's also a nice storage just for my stuff. So that's like knee sleeves, BFR bands, all of my resistance bands, handles, um, grips, things like that. So that's all in there. And then my husband's bag is up there. This is the assault bike, obviously. Use this for hit cardio because it's a lot easier for me to get between the intervals for that. I use this in prep for my cardio up until I want to say like three or four months out and my coach said only stair mill, only stair mill or treadmill. And I just don't do treadmill. Like my knees don't like it, so stair mill it was. This corner is kind of a little bit of a cluster because this is where like the house part of our garage is. So hidden behind all this is like our water heater and our furnace. Probably, it's probably not super safe having it like behind a bunch of stuff, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Uh, all our tools, paints, and my Millennium Falcon. She sits there because I don't know where else to put her. I do have a stand for it though. I just need to put it on and glue it together so it doesn't fall off. This is our main bar hub. It's full of bars that we don't use that often. And uh, like two that we do. Do I know what like half of them do? No. Uh, we have a camber bar that I can I've never, literally never been able to pick up or do anything with. I just can swivel it a little bit. A uh, duffalo bar, safety squat. I don't know where the handles are for this thing. Um, another multi-grip to go along with the other multi-grip we have. And oh, look back here, another multi-grip. This multi-grip though, the Kabuki one, I remember that was like an anniversary gift. I ordered it like eight months in advance and I think it actually came on our anniversary. I was very proud of it. Uh, we have a deadlift bar that I don't like using that often, but I will use it when I'm doing heavy deadlifts purely because the knurling is so sharp that my hands will, will we, they will bleed and it is not comfortable. This is, this is an Ohio bar, yeah? Power bar? Power bar. This is a power bar that I will use for deadlifts sometimes when I don't feel like getting the Ohio bar out just because it's like over there or something. Convenience sake. And then this is uh, the Munchkins bar. It's like five pounds. He knows how to squat with it, do overhead presses with it. And sometimes we will use it because we just need a five pound bar. And it, it has wide enough end bits to put uh, real plates on. This is our second uh, bench. It's just a seat. I will use it purely for uh, shoulder overhead presses because the big bench, when I have it on the back of my head and I'm trying to do a press, I'm not able, I have to like, push my head all the way back and I'm not able to use like my full range of motion. So sometimes I'll get stuck on the high back bench, whereas this, but that's literally the only movement we use it for, so that's why it's shunned into the corner. On the floor, we have our little kettlebell collection. I, some of them are from Walmart. Uh, the rest of them are from Rep Fitness. We've got a couple of weight balls over here. I pretty much use those just for core. And then my practice heels are here as well. My ancient ones that are still dyed from my first show in 2017. Um, I don't even know how tall they are. I don't know what brand they are. I know they're not the Shoe Fairy code Lyrical Fit Chick for 10% off if you're interested. But I love my Shoe Fairy shoes. These were just my practice meetup shoes. I didn't want to use my Shoe Fairy shoes too much before competition. This is kind of our interesting setup. We used to have the dumbbells in a double rack all the way across the garage, but then we wanted more equipment, so we condensed it down. So all the little ones are up on a vertical rack. So these were gonna be five pounds through 20 pounds. The like five through 15, we have in like the rep hex form. And then we have like random hex ones. I prefer those ones because they're not super wide and doing like lateral raises, they're not gonna smash into my hip. Um, because you know, with 
lateral raises, you get to like 15 pounds and then you will never increase your weight, ever. Um, I think I've been repping 15 for 10 years. So we have a couple of those. Oh, these were the mini plates that I was talking about to add half pounds to. These are the micro gains plates. So this allows me to have an extra two and a half pounds onto dumbbells without it being off because with the rogue ones, you had like a one and a half and a one pound. So that made it uneven and really hard to get like the actual thing with it, like doing that. And that's because all of our plates, all of our dumbbells only do like five, 10, 15, 20. They're not half pounds. Like you would see at like a normal commercial gym, like the 17 and a half or 22 and a half. During my cut when I was getting kind of weaker, but I still wanted to push strength, I couldn't do five pound jumps. I could only do like two and a half pound jumps. So those really came in handy. The rest of our dumbbells is like a full set of Troy dumbbells. We have from 15 through to uh, 1, ah, 5 to 100 in 5 pound increments. So we have the 5 starting up here. Uh, the 25s are on the floor because that's the only ones that don't have a home. But we use those ones the most, I will say. And then uh, 30 pounds over there. And then my husband built this custom slidey Rack. I don't even know if I'm, I'm gonna try it. No, I can't move it, but it's okay because I never use these weights. If I ever need those weights, I just ask him to go get them for me. I think I've only ever gone over 80 pounds with like straddle squats, like doing the straddles. Um, but even then, I will ask him to get it because I obviously can't. Over here is where we get into kind of like oh, this is like a gym gym. Like we have actual commercial gym equipment because we got this from commercial gyms. So we have a leg extension leg curl. At one point in time, we did have a prone curl. The thing with our gym that has happened is we haven't like, we didn't get just the rack and then add on. We had the rack and then we had a cable machine, and then we had a cable machine traded it out for the Aries. Then we had a leg prone curl, like we trade in and out a lot of things, or Dylan will find something on Marketplace, clean it up really nice, resell it for more than he got it for, and then use that profit to buy new equipment or another set of equipment. So we're trading things in and out of this gym constantly. But this was probably one of the best ones that we got. It's a leg curl and leg extension. It has found many homes in this gym, but it is quite large. Who'd you say, there was, who, who did you get this from? You got it off Marketplace. It came from, it originally came from Jeff Bezos, one of his mansions. This is a, a true Amazon purchase, as it came from one of Jeff Bezos' mansions, but it's really good quality. It doesn't have his name on it or anything, but. So this is that one, and then our other piece of commercial equipment is the 45 degree leg press. Currently, we are trying to sell this. Like I said, we sell, buy and sell a lot of things, but we want to sell this one so we can get a pendulum squat because I did a pendulum squat when we were in Alpha Land last year for a pink concert. We went down to Houston and went to Alpha Land, tried it out, and boy, was I humbled so fast. The girl I was setting in on was doing like four plates and I could barely do like 25 pounds on that thing. Like it was literally kicked my ass. In between is another deep dish plate holder. We have one, two, three, four, five, uh, nine sets of 45s. Yeah, we have nine sets of 45s. I wanted to say at one point we had like 12. We had a lot more than this. You sold some. Not the deep dish. Not the deep dish. But we have nine. A thousand pounds total. We have a thousand, mm -hmm. we have a thousand pounds of deep dish pizza. No, we have a thousand pounds of deep dish plates. Behind in the corner, so this is how you can kind of tell that things have moved around because we put all of our bands and everything stretchy on that wall when there was room to walk to get there. <laughs> so that is why the ones that I use the most live in my bag on the floor because it's easier to get to. I only use like two of them, but when I do need some resistant bands, like for um, pull-ups, when I really want to go to failure, I do like negatives, that's where those are. So coming back around to my rack, like I said, this is a Bells of Steel rack. 
It is obviously shorter than the rep rack and it's wider, like I was saying. So you can do things off the front. The most that I do off the front is weighted hip thrusts. This is where I do all my hip thrusts. So I will use the Rogue Ohio bar, and this is where this one lives, to put it into the deadlift jack, because we're cool like that and have an actual deadlift jack, and load up all the plates there. And then I will use my baby Bella as the back, and then for a while, we were using like a piece attached, like a piece of foam attached to one of the multi-grip bars to help rotate, but then we recently got the pivot pad from Abmat. Pivot! Pivot! Which has made all the difference in the world. I stick that on here, and then this is how I do hip thrusts off the floor. We have two of these, the Rogue hip thrust pads because my uh, one rep max is like 425. And so I'll rep out like 300 pounds on my bony little hips. So they need all the help they can get. Inside the rack is the rhino belt squat. Oh, look at me go, I'm getting this right. Rhino belt squat. I had a really bad back after competing in 2017. And so it took me a very long time of rehabbing back to like a normal barbell squat. So my husband got me this as some kind of present. My birthday anniversary and Christmas can all are within three months. His birthday is like two weeks after Christmas. So we always used to do one big gift. So this was my big gift one year. And this has helped me immensely. So days when I can't do a belt squat, I'll do this. However, you can do so much more with this as well. You can do the straddle squats in the belt squat. Like I was saying, if he's not awake and I need to do a, a straddle squat and I can't get him to get the 85 pound dumbbells, I will use the closed grip and do that. Oh, you can also do calves off this by putting the weight on your back. It's kind of like a donkey raise if you do it forward a little bit. This morning I did reverse hyperextensions by using this pad and bringing it forward and holding on for dear life on the back. And doing that off the front. Boop, 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 boop. You can also, I sometimes we use this for like pull-ups, just cause it's like just right here. Ooh. Also off of this one, up top is all of our micro plates. We have multiple little plates. So like these ones, the rogues, we have in two and a half, one, half, quarter. So that was super, we got those for when I was powerlifting and you would PR by like 0.25 pounds. Um, and so I don't really use like the baby ones anymore, but I still use the two and a half a lot. Cause like I said, I only go up in like five pound increments on weight movements now, um, just for safety reasons. I don't want to push too hard. Off the back, this is our final set of plates. We have two sets of these Bells of Steel 45 pound plates that came with the rack. And then, as you can tell, which ones are my plates. These are the Fringe Sports bumper plates. So we have uh, three sets of 45s, a 25, and then two 10s. And they are customized, again, with the plate snack stickers. During prep, these were completely uh, horrible because there's candy, one of them is donuts, one of them has sushi on it. Here I am, hip thrusting 400 pounds with sushi just in my face. You can't have me. It was very rude. Scattered amongst the gym as well is just some random assortment of things. We have the ab mat, what are those? The crash cushions. Crash cushions. They make the deadlifts less scary sounding, especially when my husband just uses the deep dishes instead of the bumpers. Makes those less scary. A TDS step, which my son just uses as a table. And then we've got like a seated pad some wedge, foot things, yoga mat, tripod. We have plenty of sandbags, which were su was super handy when I had a Kia Soul. We'd stick those in the back in the winter, so, uh, the, cause I would just call that thing a turtle on ice. 
I could just like whoosh, and stick a one of the sandbags in the back and voila, she doesn't whoosh, no more. The last piece of equipment we have is the glute hyperextension. I we used to like do it inside the rack with some janky setup that was like kind of sideways. It never felt right, hurt my ankles. I felt it more in my calves and my glutes. So I was like, okay, this is the one piece of equipment we can have that is just single use only. The thing about a garage gym is you really want it to be multi-use. So you don't want it to have just one piece taking up a whole like footprint and it just do one thing. It's just not useful. Uh, we've got battle ropes on the floor, ab mats. This is where the dog comes and chills out. This is my son's seat. A lot of times what we do in the morning when we're working out is we'll set up like his little table, little chair. Breakfast goes here, child goes here. TV is up there. So we're able to monitor him from the inside, but then just put on a show and we can continue working out. This child has literally been in the gym since the day he was brought home. He's very comfortable in here, sometimes a little too comfortable for my own good. Um, he has hit his head many times. He's absolutely fine. He climbs over everything. He knows how to do a pull up. He knows how to do a push up, kind of. He knows how to do leg raises. I think it's always really important to include your kids in your hobbies. And I feel like this is a really good one, especially since it shows, like for me, him seeing me work out, it shows him that women can be strong and muscular and it's like a good thing. Then we kind of, I think, that's pretty much everything except for my favorite corner. It's a sparkly corner. Minus all of the wood, because this is still a garage. These are my ladies. And my husband's trophy, which, whatever. These were all the crowns that I got from my 2024 season competing. And then up on the wall, we still have to kind of figure out how we want to do it because I didn't actually expect to like get that many. I thought I was going to get like maybe one medal and I got four. So we kind of just have to figure out how that goes. So all the medals are hanging up there. These are the crowns. This was my trophy from the first time I ever competed in 2017. I competed in figure and I got fifth. This year I competed in bikini and I got fourth in all the novices, fifth once in open, which is the big one on top, which I loved, and then sixth in open at the other two. And this is my husband's from when he competed in 2013. He got second place in bodybuilding. Now in the back corner, hidden away from the world, next to all of my medals, we have our easy bar, which I'll use for like skull crushers and upright rows. And then if you can't tell, this one is my Bella bar. It's a 15 kilo bar. And it just has a little bit of like a smaller diameter. I use that mostly for things where I'll use like, like an Ohio bar, which is 45 pounds for a lot of things. But if I need just a little bit lighter weight, but a full bar, I'll use that one. I won't use it anymore for squats or deadlifts because if I was gonna do a powerlifting competition, the diameter is an Ohio bar, not a Bella bar. And so practice with the correct size is important. So I'll use that for like curls or if I'm doing like lunges down the street. The beauty also about having a garage gym is I can use the outside and our driveway is like this. So I always think of the driveway as like an extension to the gym. Doing lunges up and down that thing is horrible. And then you have the sidewalk, you can do lunges down. I'll take my son, stick him on my back and just lunge up and down the street. <laughs> and that way I get like my 30 minutes of outside air a day. The thing with the garage though, however, that I found that's been like the con, is just like throughout the year, the temperature fluctuations. So it is fully insulated. It's not very well aerated, but in the winter, it would get so cold. So we do have a heater up in the corner that is attached to an Alexa plug, 
So we were able to create a routine that it would turn on about an hour before I would come to work out because as a nurse, I would wake up for a day shift at three in the morning and come out here, it's freaking cold. But if I was doing like a night shift because I'm on a variable schedule, so I switch back and forth, I'd come in the afternoon at 4 p.m. and it'd be pretty good because the sun's up. Reverse that, right now, it is 99 degrees outside which I'm grateful this week that I'm working day shift because I wake up at four to come work out. I don't have to turn the heater on, but I'm able to open the garage at like seven o'clock. And it's like a nice 70, 80 degrees. I get a good pump, I get a good sweat. Next week I go to night shift, which means I have to wake up at 4 p.m. to work out in here at the peak of the sun. I'm trying to gain weight here. I'm gonna sweat it all off next week. It's just gonna be a nasty, gross mess and it's not gonna be fun. But this is our garage. And when I tell people I have a home gym, definitely don't think they picture this. But I was able to do my entire prep, entire bulking phase in this gym. The only thing that we didn't have at the time that made me get a gym membership because I didn't have a gym membership from like 2020 until February of this year. The only thing that we didn't have was a stair mill. So I used the gym a purely for the stair mill, 60 minutes of cardio. If you watched my first video, second video, I wanna say it's my first video, we now have a stair mill. So I need to go cancel that gym membership. However, I still do need to have a gym membership, but the one that we are currently at, the hours are just not conducive for a shift worker. Uh, they are always opening and closing at different times and what I need is necessary. The population that works out at this certain gym is older or teenagers. So both bad, both don't understand gym etiquette. I was interrupted three times last week doing one exercise. So I am going to a more private 24 hour gym, which will be better for what I need. And like I said, I only use a public gym for days that I don't have, for, for days that I don't have. Uh, like, for example, abduction adductor machine. We don't have one. It's really hard to simulate in here besides doing like single leg on the cable machine kind of a thing, which is what I've been doing, but um, I tweaked my knee a couple of weeks ago, so that one like really hurts. So I've been going to the gym for the days that I need to do abduction. It is on our Amazon Prime Day wish list though. So we'll see how that turns out and where we can fit it. He's got plans. So hopefully we'll fit it. This is pretty much it. The only things that we have inside is the stair mill and then we have an assault treadmill, the curve. That one's really handy. It was especially handy during the winter when like we couldn't go on our outdoor walks. It's also really nice right now when it's too hot to go walk because we usually just go around the block a couple times and the kid rides his bike and it's a grand old time. But I still need to get my step goal and so I'll just walk on that treadmill and then our stair mill's inside because it's too tall to fit out here. I hope you enjoyed this tour of my garage gym. I'm hoping to get some more footage of me in here actually working out so that you can follow along in my journey as I bulk up for the next time I do a competition. I'm still thinking that it's probably gonna be either the fall of 2025 or the spring of 2026, taking a nice solid year to really grow. I did start with a new coach last week so this is week two with her. It's a completely different training style. Still eating a lot of food. Just pretty much almost cut out all my cardio. And I'm really interested to see what's gonna happen in the next couple months as I bulk up a bit more and try this new training technique. But as always, be sure to like and subscribe if this is something you wanna see more of. And then also be sure to check out my Instagram at lyricalfitchick for awesome content. I'm always on there on my stories and showing off my gym, how I'm working out, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.